Good afternoon or good morning, DHS. I got a note from my last podcast that I was a little too informal, so I'm going to be a little more formal on this one. Just joking. Uh, we're just going to go through some constant acceleration equations on this one. This is the third podcast of physics and kinematics. This is 1.3, so let's get to it. Um, there's two main things that we hit in kinematics, which is sometimes things are moving at a constant velocity, which means it's not accelerating, and sometimes it's moving at a constant acceleration, which means the velocity is changing. It's not constant anymore. Now, if you're just sitting in your chair like you're doing right now, dude, you're moving at a constant velocity because you're not moving. So if you're moving at a constant velocity or you ain't moving, you're still moving at a constant velocity. There's only one equation you can use. It's velocity equals distance, or sorry, I should say displacement over time. We know that equation. I, I've given that equation over the last two vodcasts. And we can manipulate that equation to be d is equal to v times t. That's just a little bit of simple algebra. Your constant acceleration equations, there's three of them. And guys, make sure you look. Um, I'll show you in class exactly what it looks like in your Prince Review Guide, what it's going to look like on the equation sheet. They look a little bit different, but this is kind of a simplified version. Velocity final equals velocity initial plus at, acceleration times time. Displacement, or position, is equal to velocity initial times time plus one-half at squared. And the last one is vf squared, v final squared, equals v initial squared. Sorry, I used a little zero there. It's the same thing as velocity initial, plus 2a d. Okay? Those are our three constant acceleration equations. Now, I want to show you a, a great problem that shows up a lot. Um, you'll probably be tested on this type of problem, so I want to give you a, a, a very early introduction to this. Here it says, an experimental diving bell. That just means a, a thing some person's inside. Okay, It's lowered from rest. That is a big term right there, from rest. And I'm, I'm going to underline that guy right there because that tells me something. That tells me my initial velocity is equal to 0 meters per second. Man, that is big time right there. It's a lot of information. It starts from rest, and then it reaches a maximum depth of 80 meters. So what do you know? My full distance is equal to 80 meters. Okay, that's something that I want to know. And it says, initially, it accelerates down at a constant rate, at a rate of 0.1 meters per second squared, which means what's happening at the beginning is I have constant acceleration. And then it says, until it reaches a speed of 2 meters per second, which then remains constant. So what happens on the second half of this is we're going to constant velocity. Now the rest of this stuff, the rest of this information is just, it, it's not kinematics, it's, it's something we'll hit later on. So we don't have to worry about it. But this problem, it is so easy if you break it up into two parts. We start right here, we go to right here, and guess what we're doing? We're doing constant acceleration. Okay? Because my acceleration is 0 0.10 meters per second squared. I'm accelerating. And then guess what? That means because I start at an initial velocity of 0 meters per second, and I accelerate to a velocity final of 2 meters per second. And then what did the problem say happens from that point on is my velocity, it's a constant velocity. And what's my velocity is it's 2 meters per second. That's not changing at all. And then there was something else they told us in this problem was that the entire displacement is 80 meters from beginning to end 80 meters okay and there's a lot of missing information here that we have to find now if we if we try to do this problem as one big problem it's just it, it it's just confusing so let's break this into two different problems so let's start at this problem what can we find what's missing here is we don't know the time do we so we can use v final equals v initial plus acceleration times time. I know my final velocity is 2, my initial velocity is 0, plus acceleration is 0.1 times time. Man, that's pretty easy algebra. We just divide, right? And we get a time of 20 seconds. So guess what? From this point to this point, it took us 20 seconds. There's another thing that's missing, too, is I don't know my displacement. I don't know how far I've gone in these 20 seconds. Displacement equals v initial times time plus one half a t squared. Now, what's nice about this equation right here is, if you have initial velocity of zero 
that just makes this whole big thing zero because anything times zero is zero. Plus one half, I know my acceleration is point 0.1. Oh, I know my time. It's 20 squared. Now, guys, if you wanted to use the other equation, the last equation on this, no problem. You can. I, I just decided to use this one because um, I like this one. It's, it's nice and pretty. Okay, so when I do this, I end up getting 20 meters. So guess what? From this point to this point, it I I went 20 meters. Now I can deduce something. If it took me 80 meters to go the whole thing, and this little little part of constant acceleration took 20 meters, then how many meters is the second part? 60 meters. Anybody can do that, right? Now when I take this second part of this equation. What's the only equation I can use with velocity equals, ooh, with constant velocity is velocity equals displacement or the change of displacement over time. I know my velocity, my velocity is 2. I know my displacement, my displacement was 60 over time. What, 60 divided by what equals 2? It is 30 seconds. So the total distance was 80 meters, like we said. What was the total time? What was the total time? If I went 20 seconds at the beginning, 30 seconds in that second part, 50 seconds total. That is at one of our toughest problems that we see on the AP exam of constant acceleration to constant velocity. Now, guys, go to MrRaden.com, go to AP Physics, and go to 1.3. There's Google Docs that is going to quiz you on this, uh, this information. Hope this helped, and I will uh, catch you guys later. All right, bye.